All right, we should be live. It looks like we got audio, we got video, everything's going, cool. One of the problems is my music is too loud. Not because I'm too old, but because I can't hear myself talk to you. Um, Spirits Within, Nicodermis, that'll work for now. Um, play my little writing tempo playlist. Oh, I wanna move uplifting up. That should be the first one, always. Um, my uplifting playlist is my playlist when I like, I need to like get out of my head. Uh, that's what I go to. Um, oops. Yeah, it's good stuff. Uh, but right now we're doing some writing cause we're kind of writing code. Um, normally when I, when I first started that, the writing was, um, words writing, not code writing, even though code is words and words are code. Ooh. Um, okay, so what we're going to run here is continuation from last night. So I'm working on a Python script that we can put in as a Python module for... Um... Oh, give me one second. Uh... Yeah, give me one second. I'll be right back. Oh, I need the... Oh, wait, I can do this. I always forget I can do this. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Um, I need to do one other thing really quickly. Uh, ba -ba -ba. And what I'm doing, I just need to ping somebody real quick about a thing. That's good. That's good. That's good. This is good. We're doing the ping. There's the ping. Uh, Uh, ba -ba -ba. We're gonna do that. We're gonna do that. We're gonna quit that. We can close that. Now we can bring this back. And sorry for the delay there. I will try to not have to do that next time. Um, so, oh, I know. Uh, one of the things I can do is work on getting a better launchpad. I'm just writing down some things that I might want to do for live coding ideas. Um, and actually, I'm going to do that in two places. Um, which, uh, this is where my personal website goes, alanwsmith.com. I think it's here at this top level. Yeah, to do. Uh, So I've got this uh, launchpad page. So when my browser, when I make a new tab, it goes to the launchpad, which is a local web server running on my box. And over time, like I used to do really good ones. Um, now on this one, I just threw links there. Like when I was first creating this, I wasn't in the headspace to actually do anything good with it. Um, so it's just a series of links for stuff that uh, we need to do. Um, so cool. Uh, and I moved like, so I moved all the work stuff, like all my work links got moved over to this work stuff. So I don't have to flash those. Um, the, and then some Amazon stuff, there's some other stuff down there, whatever. Um, so at some point I want to make that like better. And the other thing you can do with that is you can put forms on there, um, to go like search stuff. So you could like yank, uh, a Wikipedia, the, the, the form, the search form out of Wikipedia, um, or stack overflow and just put that code on your page and then you can immediately search just that site instead of going to Google. Of course, Google is get you there almost all the time anyways. Anyways, what we're doing is a continuation of the thing that we did last night where um, we have an issue right now uh, where we're trying to use Alteryx to load data into a database, so Alteryx Designer. Um, so we have analysts that are, that are working with that software and uh, the, the trick is we use multi-factor authentication with our, um, all, of our, all of our security. 
and the Ultrix system doesn't allow multi-factor authentication. You can use um, an access key and a secret key, which is kind of like a username and password, and that works. But that doesn't. But that's not how we provide our uh, our setup for our system. You have to have uh, an MFA token, a multi-factor authentication token. And currently, the Altrix system doesn't allow you to put in an MFA token. Um, so what we're doing with this one is creating a piece of Python code that, uh, instead of using the default modules that Altrix provides, we can drop in this piece of Python code into Altrix, and this piece of Python code will let us use an MFA token to then do the, the communications with S3 in the databases. Um, so last night, we got uh, the the basic thing running, and we're going to test it right now and see if it still runs. Um, so again, with multi-factor authentication, uh, so I've got I've got a profile set up um, inside uh, my command line tool. Uh, so in the uh, and we'll just kind of walk through a little bit of where things are set up. Um, so in my user account. Um, the, the software that we're using is called Bado3. That's the command line, or that's the, the Python module um, or library. I can't remember what the term is. Um, Bado3 looks for a, um, a credentials file inside a .aws directory. Um, so it's look, so in, in the root of, so this is the root of my, my directory, my, um, on the, my account. So there's this .aws directory and there's this credentials file. So inside this credential, and I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna open the credentials file right now because it has a secret key and an access key on there. I could actually show that to you because the, the only thing that you're gonna do with this is you also have to use an MFA token in order to get other credentials back that you can use. So it would actually be safe for me to show you this, but as a point of principle, I'm not gonna show you keys um, where I can avoid it. Um, the uh, and I'm using a, uh, a completely sandboxed account that, um, that I set up. This is my completely sandboxed demonstration account. So there's, there's basically nothing in here right now. The only thing that's actually in here right now is this S3, this single S3 um, bucket. So again, I'm, I'm sectioned everything off. This is not work related. This is not personal related. Um, we're, just, we're just using this demo account. Um, on top of that, we're doing as much as possible the best practices, but there's gonna be times, so like I showed last night where an access key was. That's only part of it. You need the secret key, and then also we put MFA on it, so you need the MFA token, right? So we're being as secure as we can be while still doing some demonstration stuff. So every now and then I'm gonna do some things that are a little bit not great, but it's, I'm, I should not be put, I, I, I don't believe anything I'm gonna do is gonna put it in danger of getting into this account. Also, if you do get into this account, I'm not too worried about it because the worst thing that you could do really is run up a bunch of charges on me. And I need to actually see if you can put like a max on the charges because um, there's no there's nothing in here. Um, so you can't, you know, you can't see like, you know, my vast collection of my journals or whatever. Um, uh, so anyways, that's where we're headed. And what we had happen, what we got to last night was these pieces of code where um, we're using the uh, a command line. So we're using Bado3, and then we're also calling out to an external subprocess, uh, basically on the command line, that's this AWS command. And then STS, which I forget what STS stands for. Um, AWS STS stands for Security Token Service. Okay. Um, didn't actually know that. Oh yeah, so here's the craziness of what we're doing. Uh, is the, nope. Dev account, prod account, no, that's not it. Uh, eh, okay, none of those are helpful. Well, what's this one? Um, LDAP database, okay, none of, this, none of those are helpful. Forget all that. Um, I was gonna see if one of those was basically a good graphic to show what we're doing. Um, but, but really what we're doing is we've got a piece of code that's on our computer we have uh, an access key and a secret key, and then we add in the MFA token, which is a six digit number that changes every 30 seconds. And then uh, and then the name of the MFA device, which is pretty easy to find. Um, we send all those pieces of information to Amazon. 
Amazon verifies all that stuff, so it looks at that uh, 30 second, six digit, every 30 second, six digit number, verifies that that's right for those particular 30 seconds, and then Amazon delivers back a set of credentials. And that set of credentials um, comes back in a JSON file that looks a little bit like this. So this is what we get back. Um, I've scrubbed out the secret key and the access key. Um, this token is actually, I don't know, this is Zulu time, so I don't know if it's actually expired or not. Um, but the, the token looks like this. The difference, of course, is where all these dashes are, there's a whole bunch more numbers and letters going that way, um, or that way. Am I backwards? Is this thing flip? Weird. Um, also, it's getting lighter and darker. Sorry about that. I should figure out how to like mask it in um, or lock it in. Manually adjust the shutter speed and the aperture. Um, so that so when we send, when we use that command line tool. We send all that stuff back. If it's or we send all that stuff to Amazon. If it comes back and it's solid, um, Amazon will present credentials like this that we can then take those credentials and we load those into this actual BOTO3 resource. So we're creating a BOTO3 resource, um, in this case for S3, because we want to talk to the S3 bucket, and then we push in all of those there are those three, the, we, the expiration doesn't work, or doesn't isn't involved, but the secret access key, the secret token, and the access key, and you can see in this JSON, it goes credentials, secret access key. So we pull from the command line, we put it into a JSON response, and you gotta do all this little stuff to pull it out. So here's our JSON response, this is our JSON object. Then we go to credentials, which is this first level, right? And then access key ID, which is this one. And so that goes into this parameter for creating the body resource. That, that is what lets us then use those credentials, those temporary credentials, to then go co communicate back with Amazon with S3 and actually do stuff with S3 at that point. So that's kind of the back and forth. Um, and that's what gets you the security. And so that's where, right now, Altrix doesn't have the capability of doing this balance because there's no place for it to do the S3 credential, or excuse me, the MFA credential um, to push it in. We'll actually talk to them about a feature request for that. Um, so Altrix folks, if you're watching, feature request. Um, I, I'm actually kind of surprised Actually, I'm not that surprised because I don't. I'm curious to know what percentage of organizations use MFA for this type of stuff. My guess is not that many. Otherwise, Altrix would have already had a bunch of feature requests and they, it would have been implemented. So it's an interesting thing. But um, hopefully, as more hopefully as more people get more security conscious, more people use MFA, multi-factor authentication, and that becomes just a standard in all the tools so that we can use this type of stuff without having to, to do this kind of hack that we're doing. Um, so uh, just to walk through the rest of the script, so we create a resource and we move it to this variable. Um, I'm just creating two other variables, which is the bucket name, so this AWS PG Sandbox, which is AWS PG Sandbox, so that's the name of our S3 bucket, and um, uh, the key that we want, which is the path, basically, is the quickbrownfox.txt. And so you can see in here, here's the quickbrownfox.txt. And then we go back, we use the S3 object, or we make an S3 object from the resource. And again, some of the stuff is a little bit like, okay, yeah, I'm just following along and playing the game. Um, but we pass the bucket name and the key, that comes back as, an, as a variable in an S3 object. And then from there, we can get it we can get the body of it, we can read it, we can decode it um, and ignore any errors. And then that pulls it into a string, we print the string, and that's what gives us the output. Um, so that's that's where we are right now. And so hopefully, I haven't changed anything since last night, so hopefully if we put in a, a good MFA token here, uh, which again, changes every 30 seconds, so um, you don't have my secret key and my access key. So that's, a, that's an, actually, that's another good reason to not show the secret key and access key, right? Because I'm about to show you a live MFA token. If you have my secret key and my access key and this, um, this ID, which is for the MFA device, you would have access to, to being able to work on that account. And just to, just to show you one other thing real quick as a review, um, this account currently is is very locked down. Um, so under users, we, we did the user creation last night, 
Um, so this is the account, uh, Greenfield Demo CLI1. Uh, it has force MFA on it, which makes sure that you can't turn off an MFA, otherwise it won't work. Um, and it also has this group to allow access to that sandbox. So with the Amazon permission system, the, it's, it's a, um, everything is denied to start with and you have to explicitly allow stuff. And so the only thing that we've explicitly allowed is, um, uh, do, 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 scroll down, um, is this piece of policy, which basically says, I want to allow in this S3 bucket, which again is our AWS PG sandbox, I want to be able to list it. And then down here, everything inside of it, so the sandbox, or sorry, the S3 bucket slash star, so slash star is everything inside of it, I wanna be able to put things, get things, and delete things. So that's the only thing this account can do right now. Um, as we move forward, um, I'm probably gonna work on Redshift, so we'll have to add some Redshift permissions, and that's gonna be a little bit of a thing. This is gonna be a largely experiment. I haven't done a bunch of stuff with, with like Redshift, for example, so uh, we're gonna stumble along through this. Uh, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to me. Hopefully it'll be interesting to you. But anyways, back to our Python, back to our MFA tokens, which again, you can only get if you have my phone. I just have to find it. What's the name of that account? Greenfield, no, green, green something. Oh, interesting. One, two, two, whoops. One, two, 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 one. It's a palindrome. So, got credentials, quick brown fox. Okay, cool. So it actually worked. Hooray, it was working last night, it still works. So uh, do our start, do our JSON response. We call out to that command line tool. Um, and there may be a way to do that actually inside Bado itself. I wouldn't be surprised if there is. I just know the command line one, so I just went with that. Um, actually, you know what? I'm not going to switch this. I'm just curious. Um, STS. Yep. I'm not at all surprised. Assume role, paginate, get access key info, get session token. That's probably going to be it. Return temporary set of credentials for IAM users. Uh, yep. So I could have done that in Bado. So right now I'm calling out to the command, basically I'm calling out to the command line. I could have actually done this straight in Bado. I'm not gonna change that right now. Eventually I will just so it's cleaner and it's all within the script. Um, but for now we're good to go. So now I need to figure out what I want to do. Um, the, all right, I actually have to change the music a little bit cause I need it to not switch out from under me. Um, I don't mind any particular song, but I need it to stay the same. Uh, it's just distracting for me when the song changes. Like if I'm coding, it's no big deal, but when I'm trying to talk and code and the song changes, it can mess with me. So this seems okay. We're gonna leave that on single song to loop it, and then we're gonna get back into this. Um, so now what I need to do is, I don't wanna have to have uh, I, I don't want to have to have every time somebody runs a process in Alteryx, I don't want them to have to, to put in their MFA code. Right now, that MFA code lasts for 30 seconds, but when that 30 seconds is over, if you uh, so pretend that this is inside the Alteryx code and we're running um, some type of transformation. Which I don't really use Alteryx, it just does magic. Um, uh, it basically, you know, you can, you can take a bunch of data, you can transform it, you can move it, you can push it in other places. Um, the, and so we're trying to push it to S3 is the goal that I'm solving here. You, this, this will actually be useful for other stuff, but I'm trying to do the S3. Um, but right now, every 30 seconds, you would, when you run Alteryx, you would have to go look at your phone, get the MFA code and, um, and change the code again to rerun the process. And that would be a pain. Um, and this gets to the security convenience thing. Like that would be more secure because um, the other, because our other option is we actually store these temporary credentials, right? So 
this, this piece of credential comes back, this, is, this will live for a while. And we can determine how long by setting this duration in seconds. Right now I've got it at 900. Um, you can go for up to 36 hours. So we can make a credential that will last for up to 36 hours that's basically this stuff. And if we stored that, we can continue to use that so that our so that our end users or so that our people using the product won't have to um, constantly put in their MFA code every 30 seconds. They'll put it in once and then they've got up to 36 hours of time before they have to put it in again. Um, I'm gonna talk with our security folks. We'll figure out how long we actually wanna make those things last. My guess is an hour. So once an hour, you'll have to put in your MFA. That's probably a good thing. Maybe it's half an hour, maybe it's five hours, maybe it's eight hours, like once a day, once an hour, once a half. So this will be a security conversation that we have to, to figure out where we want to go with the security access for this. Because when you have those credentials, you can do whatever that account can do. Um, and so, I mean, we already trust our users because we, you know, they're in the system with their regular username and password and MFA. This, but like most of the time those are stored, like this is just another thing. So it's just, it's just part of the conversation. Like we'll just walk through it. Um, so anyways, where, where I'm headed now is two things. Um, thing one is how do I want to put in the MFA token? And I think, and I'm hoping with Alteryx, we can, there, we can set up um, uh, basically an input field in Alteryx that somebody can just put in and then we can pass it to the script. So I'm not gonna worry about that right now. That, that should be pretty easy to do. The other way that I could do it, um, cause you don't really want people messing with the code itself. The other way I could do it is I could just make a file out here um, that just has the MFA token in it and just say, okay, just update this six digit number in this text file and you don't have to dig through the code and point it. People could dig through the code and, and do it, right? All, all we have to do is make sure that this value gets the update. We could do that any number of ways. People get freaked out looking, uh, non-coders tend to get freaked out looking at code. So not ideal for them to be looking at code. We could just make it a text file and then go out the text file. If we do that, we actually have to do some scrubbing on it to make sure like if they don't, if they add an extra uh, line or if they put a space in front of it or a space after it, those are usually the thing. So you got to mush it and just get the six digits. Easy to do. Um, but the other thing that hopefully we can do is actually set up a module in Alteryx. Um, and again, I don't know what the terminology that Alteryx uses is. I'm just going to call it a module or a widget um, to put in the six digit number directly in the Alteryx interface. And the other thing that's great about that is um, uh, our, our I always, end users are always just a weird term for me, but like the, the folks that are using Alteryx are going to be in Alteryx. They're going to be in that software. So it's really nice if we can provide them a way to not have to go somewhere else to some other text file to make an edit to get the stuff working. If we can actually provide the way for them to do it inside Alteryx itself, that's basically the best, that's the, that's the best of the, of those user experiences. So I'm gonna worry about that later because that's dealing with Alteryx coming in. Um, the, the other thing that I need to do or that I'm working on is, or that I'm about to work on, is going through and taking these credentials and basically just saving them off. Um, so, uh, except do I want to do that? Because I've got, yeah. So I, I need to I need to save off those credentials because I I don't want to have, again I don't want to have to have people go through and uh, put the MFA token in all the time. So the next thing we're going to do is basically we're just going to save off these credentials and then we're going to set up the process so that the first thing it does is when it runs the process it's going to look at that credential storage see if it's got valid up-to-date credentials and if so it'll just use those without requiring an mfa code if those things are out of date or they aren't there then the the script will process through and say hey give me your mfa token um so i wonder if altrix can do a pop-up box we'll just have to figure out how that's going to work um because I'm just thinking about the user interface because they would still have that thing that says, put your MFA token in here. Um, so maybe, you know what we should do? We should actually have two separate things. This should be two separate processes. There should be one process that, um, 
that that does the credentialing, and then the other process that does the um, the S3 communications or all the communications that need to have the credential. That way we get separation between those two things. You can just have, you can just have, so basically there would be one workflow up top that is put your MFA token in and hit the button and it will go and grab and, and set up the credentials. So you only have to do that once every, again, I'm going to say hour, once every hour. Then your other workflow is I want to go do this stuff. I want to go do all this magic with the data and then I want to push it to S3. And so that push to S3 will then go look at those credentials and that's where we we'll actually make the move and say, hey, it's valid, it worked, or it's not valid, it failed. And if it's not valid, it failed, then you go back to that top level workflow and put it in. That, that prevents us from having to have that MFA token sticking into the, the, the main workflow when it's not used most of the time. Um, so we'll just run these credentials off and, uh, and, and have them basically be in a storage place and we're just gonna save the JSON file. Um, and then create a second, a new thing that uses those, that, that sucks in those credentials and, and does the work with them. Okay, so that's, that's where we're gonna head. Um, and that shouldn't be too awful. Um, now the thing that I need to do here, the one thing I gotta watch out for is, well, I'm gonna do two things. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go into my uh, IAM, Identity and Access Management, my user console, and I'm gonna turn off access to, um, to everything for this account. So this is the account I'm, I'm messing with, this Greenfield Demo 1. I've just disabled all permissions, so this account can't do anything. Um, so on the off chance that I flash credentials, which I might do here in a second accidentally, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try not to flash them, but that may happen. So just in case it does, and you're watching the stream live and you grab the credentials and you try and do, go do something, you can't do anything with this account. Um, it's just, it's completely locked down. Um, as far as I can tell from everything that I understand with Amazon, if I have an improper understanding of that and you know better, please let me know. Um, preferably not by hacking into my account. Um, bear with me one second. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so that's locked down, we're good to go there. Uh, so now what we need to do is actually write some code now that we're half an hour in. Um, So this is all the S3 stuff. I'm not going to need any of this. I'm just going to hack this stuff out for a second. Um, I don't need any of this. Got credentials, right? So this this is pretty easy. Um, so this... Well, it's funny. Okay. Um, Really, all we should have to do uh, <laughs> so I don't write a lot of code these days. Um, so I have to remember how to write to a file. Um, that is true. That is how, by the way, if you're new to coding, look, I'm making a thing that's going to be very helpful for our organization and I had to go look up how to write to a file. So it's crazy to feel lots of pressure and you can feel lots of pressure, but just recognize that like, you can still do it when you don't know everything. That's one of the biggest things with this is you won't know everything. And like writing to a file is like one of the most basic things and I just had to look it up. So like, just kind of like keep that in the back of your head um, and Tell anybody who's messing with you to fuck off, right? Um, so with open, I think I can kind of remember it now. Um, we're gonna do this uh, JSON credentials.json, because it's gonna be a JSON file. We're also gonna, if we, quotes around that, does that work? Yeah, okay, cool. Um, yep, we're gonna write to it as JSON file. And now what we should be able to do, oh, do I actually want to flip this to Botto now that I need to mess with it? I kind of do. 
Yeah, let's move it to Bado. I'm just trying to think through this. You're going to see these credentials because I'm going to need to have that happen. Um, but that's okay because I can... The account's locked down. I'm just walking through this in my head, make sure I'm cool with it. Um, yeah, the account's locked down. You can't do anything with it. Uh, the... Uh, thanks, Steve. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's let's flip over and let's do it with Bado. I wanna I wanna take this and do this now. Hopefully, it won't be that bad because we know most of this stuff. So, get session token and keyword args permissions. So here's our thing. This may be super simple. Um, copy, paste, oh, that's weird. The documentation said the minimum you could do was 900 seconds. Let's test that. Actually, all right, I'm just thinking through this again about the so hang on, um, I'm gonna run, okay, um, response, why is that red? Why is it angry? Why is it angry? Uh, probably because I don't have a client. Uh, so I'm guessing it wants an S3 client. So I do this, S3 resource is what I've done most of the time. Um, but you can also start with a client, which hopefully it shows us up here. Yeah. I, I don't totally understand the difference between, you can start with a client, you can start with a resource. I feel like you can start with a couple different things up here, um, or maybe a couple other things. But so now we put this client in, because we're, we're trying to call client right here, but we haven't defined client. Um, so now we've defined client. And client is bot 3 with a client, and we're putting the session token something, security token service, whatever that was. So now that's cool. Uh, so serial number is this here. Uh, and just to show where we get that from, uh, in our IM console, if you go to our users and we go to our user uh, and we go to security credentials, this is the, I don't know why it's bouncing. Um, this is our device ID uh, for, the, for the MFA token. I'm assuming this is what that wants uh, when it says serial number. Because uh, down, somewhere else it calls it something different. Oh, serial number. No, it doesn't call it different. Smart. They keep it the same. Good on them. Um, so this, again, the only thing I'm putting in here is um, the the device ID and my um, MFA token. It is also then using the security key, or sorry, the access key and the secret key from my, my, my credentials file that I showed you earlier. Um, so... Again, because you can't see that stuff, you can't do the same thing that I'm doing. Um, but how, so I'm just going to run this first to see if it works. Uh, let me get rid of all this stuff too. Uh, survey says 442. Nine zero three, running. Kaboom! Something blew up. Invalid range duration of seconds five. Yeah. Okay. So there and actually one two three. That was what they had in their documentation. That's also invalid. Um, what was it? Get session token. This one. Yeah. So the documentation is actually giving you an invalid um, number. It has to be. Oh, actually, yeah. It says right here duration seconds has to be from 900 to uh, 129,600, uh, 
with 400 as, and it goes for 12 hours as the default. Okay, I didn't see that in the other documentation. I don't remember seeing that in the other documentation. Um, and then if you're the root account, you can only do it for one hour. And so there's the, I'm not working with a root account, I'm working with a, a lower level account. Um, so cool, cool, cool. This is cool. I'm actually really glad we are making this switch because it's just straight code now. Uh, so if we put 900 here, and I think the 30 seconds is already up. The 30 seconds is already up. Uh, 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 uh. Run it. Credentials refresh, but refresh credentials are still expired. Huh? I don't know what that means. In the past, yeah, error messages. All right. Um, runtime error. Credentials were refreshed, but the refresh credentials were still expired. So in the past, I've had this happen with using git on the command line. And so I need to bounce off. Oh. All right, I'll tell you what's happening right there. The screen that I'm looking at, wherever that is, is my Mac, which is over here. I see the full OBS in my Windows machine that I'm looking at. I forget that when I move on the Mac, when I move my mouse all the way down, that starts the screensaver, but it doesn't feel to me like I'm moving it all the way down because the Windows machine is way over here. This thing is right there. So that's why I keep closing that, just FYI. Um, but what I need to do right now is actually go jump into my um, keychain access on my Mac, because what might be happening uh, and that's for code commits. Amazon S3. So it may be that my Mac is storing a credential somewhere. I don't know how that would be happening. Oh, I know what's going on. Um, get rid of that. I know what's going on, I think, I think. All right, let me bring us back. There we go. So, inside my credentials file, all right, I'm gonna hide this again for one second. Um, Cause I wanna show you this credentials file and I'm gonna show you what's going on, what I think is going on. Um, So, uh, all right, what I'm going to do, so I just cleared, this is that AWS credentials file. Um, so inside here, I'm, I'm loading the credentials file into Sublime Text, ST is Sublime Text, credentials. There's a default, this credentials file can have multiple profiles in it. Um, so the one that is my default, I'm using this credential process, which is actually going in through and doing some decryption of a encrypted piece of text, specifically so that I can do this stuff. Oh, that's what I should do. I should do that same thing for the demo so you can't see my secret key and access key in here. Um, but anyways, generally speaking, what you would do and, and what we're doing for this profile, so this demo CLI is the profile that is actually associated with the account that we're working with. Um, so here's the access key and the secret key. I've truncated them so you can't really see what's going on. But what I think is happening is this Spot03 client right now is trying to use this default profile and is not trying to use this demo CLI profile. So I think I need to somehow tell it to use demo CLI. Uh, I'm pretty sure... I'm, I'm, Pretty certain that's what's going on. Cause like here you can see, this is me in the command line version that we're using. This is where I made that distinction. Um, 
So let me close this for a second because I'm going to put those keys back in and close it. All right. And so now we can bring this back. So if that's what's going on, is it's trying to use my default account and that's why it's kind of freaking out. It's giving me this refresh, but are still expired. So like the, the thing that I just sent it was the wrong MFA device and the wrong token. And it was like, nope, that's just not, that's just not a thing. We're not gonna deal with that. Uh, so the question is, all right, so we're gonna, we're gonna try something silly. Um, No, it's not gonna work there. Uh, is it gonna work there? No. Well, let's try it. No way this works. Yeah, okay, so profile doesn't go there. I didn't think it was because of the documentation. Um, or I didn't see it in the documentation. So what we need, probably, oh, give me one second, because I also need to kill some other thing. It's already closed, but I just want to close the app, which is that keychain access, um, which everything you can't see it, but um, I just don't want it open. So we want this client, STS client, auto client, STS client. How do we do profile? That's not helpful. Um, so now what we need to do is look for Bado three client profile. And somewhere down here, hopefully it proved field profile. I feel like there should be another one. We don't want to use a config file. We need to tell it. Sim roll. All right. Um, oh, it's a config object. That's not really what we want. We want the, how about this one? There you go. Uh, this is, so yeah, see, this is for session, broke body three session and a session, but let's see, Amazon's usually pretty consistent across their, code. So we're gonna try and just put it here. Oops. And it's gonna be demo CLI, run it. Boom, did not like profile name, okay. Um, session, to okay, so no, it's not session token because we know that those are the only three things that go there, client. So it's gotta be when we're creating this client, like somehow we have to be able to do it here. Um, so let's try this. Auto three client uh, profile. That's an older version. That's not going to help. See, this gets into where it might be using that resource versus the thing client. client, CLI profile. Oh, here we go. Set up default session. Okay, let's see if this works. So we need to get this out of here. Go back to demo CLI 
Cross his fingers. Crap. Access denied. Oh, okay. Session token. Okay. Lucia's thing would stop popping up. Um, new error. So I should, we should have been talking about the error messages. But now we're getting an access denied when calling get session token. And it says failed with token. Oh, I cannot scroll. Scroll. Invalid MFA one time passcode. Aha. So. Oh, it expires in two seconds, so we'll just wait for that for a second or two. Four, five, five, nine, one, five. I think this is a good order. Boom. All right, so it's not printing anything, like it just says starting, right? But no output. That's because I'm throwing the response in, or I'm throwing stuff into this response um, and then not doing anything with response. Um, so now is when. I'm just going to re-verify. I'm nervous about doing this, but I'm going to do it, I think. So this user has no access to anything. So when I show, well, so I actually don't have to show them. So, well, so normally what I would do right now is I would print out this response. Um, just to verify that it's the it's the right thing, it should just be a, a block of JSON. I'm actually going to go off screen and do that real quick. Ah, the session expired again. Stand by. I need like a hamster dance thing going up there. Um, whoops. I did not put that in the right place. Uh, try again. Yep, okay, cool. Um, now let me clear that. And just clear that. All right, so now we can bring this back. Yeah, so when I did print response down here, um, it showed me a JSON token uh, or JSON credential that looked like this. Um, different keys and or different values, right? Um, get rid of that. Uh, um, so now really all I need to do is throw, <laughs> this is hysterical, I'm spending hours writing uh, just a few lines of code, right? Sometimes that happens legitimately. Um, a, a coworker and I spent probably 10 to 20 hours over the past week um, working with stuff to figure out that we needed to turn two checkboxes off, but it took all 20 of those hours to get to find those two checkboxes. So like sometimes that happens. Um, but so now what we can do so here's here's the file. If I click on this once, does it come up? No. Okay. Um, so I'm just writing out this credentials JSON file, and like right now, there's nothing in it. Um, again, I've got this thing locked down, so if I accidentally show it again, that's okay. This has to stop happening. Display blue notifications. Enable system notifications. Is that going to work? Because I would like that to stop happening. Um, So now I got to remember again, file write, okay. Um, so now we do JSON file write response. Whoops. All right, so we run this. We still shouldn't see any output. Oh, I didn't do the, okay, good. This is fine. Uh, let me get rid of that for now. Um, I didn't do the token again. See, this is what I don't want to have to have uh, all my analysts do, is every time they run a thing, go punch in a new piece of code, um, a new thing, right? I, I'm feeling what that pain would have been like right now. Um, string not a dick, okay. Um, we're just gonna Google this error message. 
Because it came, I guess it came back as a dictionary. Must be a string, not dick. Okay, so. You got a data, low data. Okay, we gotta do JSON dumps. Um, so we do need, J okay, we already got JSON. Our JSON module's already loaded. So I think if you do JSON dump S for string, I'm assuming, and do that, token's probably expired. Token's expired. Yeah, that's the thing, like with the MFA, there's no way to adjust the time. So like on this token that I'm making, I can set it for 15 minutes to 36 hours, but MFA is 30 seconds every time. Um, do it. Oh, it's not serializable. Okay, uh, let me just do dump. Crap. Oh, session tired expired. <laughs> oh. All right, so here's what you could do. Uh, you could set up a camera with optical character recognition that pointed at the one-time password at the at the MFA token, and then just automatically had it like where you could do a hotkey and paste it in, or you, it could write to a file, so you could just always have your MFA going whenever you're running stuff like this. That's that's a hack. That would be very interesting to set up, but. Um, is maybe a little bit of overkill, but would be fun to do. You don't need JSON load data. Sorry, use JSON dumps. Print JSON loads. Actually, JSON returns a JSON object, so you don't need JSON loads. You, are you, Is it load us? Is that what I want to do? I may want to do dump and then and look in the book of magic. Um, I thought it was already, so it's a dictionary, I guess. It's not coming back. And this is where I, you know, Python people are probably screaming at me right now. Um, yeah, so you can dump the JSON object, but I don't think it—I don't think it actually is a JSON object. I think it's a dictionary, right? Because that was the error that we got. Oops. So JSON file. What does this give us? Access denied is what it gave us because token. So theoretically, I could turn that off, but I'm not going to turn that off. Um, because that's the whole point of this thing. Um, actually, I couldn't turn it off because then this wouldn't actually go grab it. Um, Right, our string not dick. So Python JSON dict. Um, okay, let's dig in a little bit. I'm just kind of scanning at this point. Dump, dump s. The dump S didn't work. Dick was not going to be to order. So it should be. I confused. Why didn't dump S work? Let's try that again. Ah, access denied. 
By the way, really glad I have face ID on here so I don't have to type in my passcode every single time that I'm doing this because that would have been even more not enjoyable. Object of type of date time is not serializable. All right. Um, I am going to Give me one second. Uh, I'm going to check this again. I want to see what's going on here. Hey, guess what? MFA token expired. Um, oops. I don't understand. It's showing hang on a second, I'll show you. Again, I'm just gonna show you what it's given me from clearing out. Good lord, that's long. <laughs> It is no joke with a session token. Um, with how long that is, that's incredible. Yeah, they're not messing around there. Um, so that's all good, that's all good. Okay, uh, let me show this again. So, this is what came back. Actually, hang on one second. Yeah, all good. Um, which looks like JSON to me. But why? So I mean, I'm going to try something. Um, JSON load. Let's just see what that does. It's going to yell at me for not having the credential. I remembered it this time. Um, it's a dict object. On a string. It's not a string. That was that would have worked. That would have been great. Oh, it expired fast. Not a dict. Okay, so that's a it's a dict. So how do we make that? But it looks like JSON to me. I mean, this is that's what printed out when I said print. So, how are you doing? Function used. Dump, dict to final pointer. Yeah. We tried that. I think we try that. Yeah, yeah, we try it literally right here. Would that work? Session. Object of type date time is not JSON serializable. Uh, you are not helpful.
Um, I have a question. Sample, sample, someday time. But JSON five, la la la. Is this in Python? Python looks like, according to this. Doesn't say it up there, but it says it down here. So I'm assuming Python. Um, Are you using Mon Mongo Engine for comments? PyMongo is fancy for uh, no, no. Uh, Django. All right. So, can we actually just dump this JSON dumps? So, this is where we're stuck is it doesn't like I was a lot more in here than I thought. Uh TMZ, TMZ. Doesn't like this. Oh, wait a minute, is this? All right, so we're gonna go about this a different way. Um, print, response, I think is what gets you into a dict. Credentials. Um, expiration. What is that going to do? Well, I can tell you what it's going to do right now. You guessed it. Oh, it doesn't write my face anymore. Alrighty, let's see, five, four, six, four, seven, four, run it. Okay, cool. All right, screw all the rest of this. We're just gonna make our own JSON thing. Um, uh, so how would we do that? We're gonna do, so we need it to look, I mean, it's gonna look like this. But I think the only thing we need are secret key session token access key. I don't think we need the expiration. That's just uh, information. Um, and yeah, uh, still listening to the same song on loop. It's really like, it's a good, like it doesn't have words and it's got a good constant tempo and a good constant volume um, and it's kind of groovy. Hence the head knobbing. And this is me, take it like, I'm just, I'm taking a quick like mental break for a second um, cause that's whatever, we've been going for a little while and it's time to just like chill for a second and like chill for a second. Um, Sometimes at this point I would go on Twitter, but that's actually a bad idea. It's better, it's actually really interesting right now just for me sitting here talking and talking to you um, instead of going on Twitter. Like it, it's, cause like when I take breaks like this, it's easy to go on Twitter, but then you get sucked into Twitter and that's still kind of spinning your brain a little bit. 
Um, so I've kind of been, or right now I'm thinking about like, what are other ways to like take a break? Well, I guess get up and walk would be a really good one. Um, oh, the, like once the weather gets nicer, that'd be a good thing to do. Just go walk for five or 10 minutes, just take a lube. Um, or like, it feels like writing something would be nice. Um, anyways, I'm not, I could use more time doing that, but like, I, I can get back into this now. Um, oh yeah, I've got a, I've got aluminum foil here. Um, I saw somebody on Twitter, uh, the other day post about, she was at like her family's garage, um, and there was like a hole in the ceiling. And so that basically was made a camera obscura. Um, so you could see what was up here, down here on, on the floor. And she was just like, oh, it's so neat or whatever. And it reminded me of my freshman year in college when my roommate and I did that with our window. Um, and it was super cool. So I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna cover up this window at some point and just like make a camera obscura just to watch it out there, just to do it. Cause I haven't done that. It won't last very long because I'm not going to want the room that dark. Um, I did in college. Not now. All right. That was our break. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make our own JSON. JSON. Um, and so... Oh, actually, sorry. The other thing that I want to do right now before I forget about it is... this. So I want to make another note, Python auto three use profile. Uh, use profile with client CLINT. Auto mm -mm, three mm -mm. client call. Just because I had to, since I had to look that up, I'm gonna just make a note of it in here so that I've got it in my and, uh, and I call this my grimoire, my book of magic, um, also known as NV Alt. Uh, so that, that's, that's going to be a handy one to have. Like that feels like one that I'm definitely going to want to potentially, or I'm potentially going to run into in the future. So, um, and even if there's just the slightest chance that I might, I'm going to do it again. Um, or I, I, I throw notes in there. Um, so, and actually what I was going to do right now is look for pi, JSON, uh, preprint, read, write, list, logging. I just want to see what I got in here. It's been a while since I've done Python stuff. So um, now what I want to do is make a new Python. Or make a new Python. I want to write in the language. Um, so I think we just do loads, right? Decoding JSON. JSON loads. From, oh, I wonder if you could just pass string. No, it's a dict. Okay. Um, what is that? Oh, okay. Now we're going to use dump string. All right. We're going to try and do this here. Uh, so JSON file dot write JSON dump s nothing right now. What's that going to do? It's going to give us an access denied because our security session session token security has expired. 
Actually, security has not expired. Security is very much in front of us. Two, eight, three, seven, seven, nine, two. Do it. Needs an object, so let's give it this. Let's run real quick and see if we get it before. Nope, the session expired. Wait, no, it didn't. Access and I am a calling kit session. What? I wonder if you can only call it once per thing. Cool. So we're going, so we're writing to our JSON file with JSON dumps. So we should just see that. Nice. Now what we want to do is mimic this. So we're going to temporarily put that Here, so we can see it. Um, and basically, we're just going to build our own little JSON here. So, do we just do this? I don't know, single or double quotes are the right way to do this. We're going to do double. Okay. Colon, that, what's that gonna do? I'm just gonna build it up a little bit at a time. Ah, session! One third of this video will be updating session tokens. Mm, 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 mm. And do it! And, oh, it's looking better. I think we're on to something. So we're just gonna go ahead, whoops, that was the wrong button. Just gonna go ahead, well, I guess I could just do this. Copy, paste it, oops. one too many of all those things. I'm guessing, no. I'm also guessing we need to do this. Hey, look at me. Oh, change right there. At some point I need to find uh, music that I can play back there that I can hear that you can hear that's just kind of same thing about Bob. Um, sweet. And then we already know that this works. Oh, I guess I should have done all of them. Oops. Actually, just gonna get rid of expiration because again, I don't think it needs to be there. Do that. Do this. Do this. Do this. Do this. Okay. So I'm going to run this after I put in my token again. Yeah, this would be a much better stream if you guys could have a little bit of this going on too. All right, that looked like it worked. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to hide this for a second because I want to, like this is going to have the codes in it uh, for reals. And it certainly looks like it does. So wheat. Oh, you know what I never did? I don't think. Uh, that's too funny. I never, uh, I never made a get repo for this. Shame on me. 
So now I want to click off of that. I want to go here really quickly. I want to do this. I want to rename. Am I missing rename? Can you not rename from here? That seems kind of not so. If I just click it. What the hell? Whoa. Uh, okay, I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I guess it wants to always have a main for entry. Get MFA or get session token, I guess is what this is, right? Dot pi. Remove all this junk. Okay. Into here. Uh, actually, I can get rid of all that stuff right now because it's still in the main file. But we're going to hide everything in main. So that main is just whatever. So that's just going to say hello world. OK. This we can get. We can drop that. We can drop that. All right, hour and a half, and we made a, uh, oh, we get rid of subprocess now. So this gets us our credential. Again, we'll have an Altrix interface somehow to, to punch in this number. Um, and that might actually be a file. Like, because we're only gonna have to do this once every however long um, when, we, when we set this token, it might be a file, but ideally it would be in the Altrix interface. Um, at some point for that. And then all we're doing is we're just dumping this JSON file. That was a lot of time to figure that, that out. Um, OK, cool. I like that. Um, so we've got that. And actually, what I'm going to do now is make a, um, what's this under? Oh, it's been, you know, it's been so long since I've, does it get bare in it? Yeah. Um, I guess I just get a net, whatever. Initialize empty git repository, get very nice. Okay, so um, we want to ignore what's going on. Bail that because that's our virtual environment. Um, we want to ignore the JSON credentials. I'm not great at Git. Um, I just kind of hang on to it. So, all right, cool. That's got so that's got our token, Git session token. So now what we need to do is make a new file. Um, which is push to S3. 
And this is going to be a Bado. Um, and we got a whole bunch of code here that I think we can reuse. So where did we start that code? Where is, let's back off the stuff we don't need anymore. We don't need this. We don't need the client. We've got that. We don't need any of this because that's in the other file. Credentials we got. Don't need any of that. That's our original version. Oh, okay, so I'm actually gonna save this. Yeah, that came as a JSON response off of that. So it's weird that the Bado client is different. Um, Actually, let's do this. So process. See, again, this is just, I, I want to have notes of all this stuff. Um, Bado3 native, that's the word I was looking for. Um, so here's the native way to do it, right? That, 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 we can actually drop this because we're not writing. That just shows you how to get it. Um, whoops. Oh, I just saw something else I could do on Twitch, which is um, I'm gonna be doing a lot of Twitch, folks. I'm really, I'm really liking this. Um, it gives me focus that I wasn't, that's new. There's lots of new stuff going on with my brain. Um, that's one of them. I really feel like that should be down further. When I do this. Did I hit that? Am I lean in? That's cool. It's better than I was like this. Um, and also it's not that. Should be tighter up here and then whatever. Um, again, I'm a little bit, that was pretty intense focus, especially having to talk. So, um, I'm getting a little bit, uh, but that's cool. I like this. You know what? I wonder if I should, I mean, like nobody's on, so, um, is anybody actually watching right now? Does not look like it. That's cool. Okay, so I'm gonna take a break. Um, yeah, so we finished that. Oops, I can't see because there's too many computers. Something just happened. I don't know what it was. Um, this is cool. I like this. We got we we got our Git session token running. Um, Turns out to be super simple. Uh, and then like we can set this stuff up as configuration so you can pass that into it and you can pass the token into it. So those would be the two incoming things that we have. Um, and actually, so we'll do one last thing here. So I should put this in like a, Def, what are those things called? Not modules, not something. I don't remember. Uh, function, or what's the other word for them? Method. Brain go sideways. Uh, but what we, what we do want to have is um, MFA, MFA, serial number. So I want these as variables. They'll be passed in. Um, I 
sure. I mean, we can do whatever in here because it's already changed 50 times. Um, and so we should do this and we should do this. So we're just moving them into variables to make it easier to pass. Uh, none of that needs a variable. That's just a straight dump. Um, the file path will hard code because we want to make sure that everything's hard coded at the same location. Um, eventually we'll put this into like a specific place uh, instead of just right next to the thing. Um, I actually don't even know how it would work next to the thing. Ah, we should actually try that in Ultrix because um, maybe that's fine, um, especially if it buries it. Uh, but so just for fun, we're going to run it one last time. And it should not return anything. Oh, hello world. Oh, why did I do that? Oh, because it's on main. Oh, wait a minute. Does this always run main? That's not helpful. Run main. Oh, come on. Oh, wait, hang on. What does this do? Nope. Edit configurations. Main, Python, that's why it would let me change it. Script path, main. But I don't want to do that. I want there to be multiple scripts in this project. Uh, I guess that's actually not awful because each one of these could be, ugh, but it doesn't make sense really for the, each one to be its own thing. Like, um, How? There we go. You can run it that way. It's gonna be a pain in the ass for the... Um... Oh, now it switched to it. So now I can just do the, the hotkey again. Okay, cool. I'm good. Uh, since it didn't explode and I'm not seeing errors, I'm assuming it's cool. Uh, we should put, well, at some point we should put an error handling. Actually, that shouldn't have been cool. It should have choked. Uh, crap. We need to put an error, error handling. Because the token has expired. And that's not the same token. Oh, okay. Um, this is fine for right now. This is a good first step. Uh, we'll build the full process here, which is creating the S3 and then also having the thing that pushes up to, sorry, creating the token and then having the thing that pushes up to S3, which again, that actually that should be relatively straightforward because we're just going to be reading that token file now, which should be straightforward, and then doing a push up. Um, uh, so that should go relatively quickly. Uh, and then that would be cool. That would be cool, cool. Um, what am I doing? What's my next thing? Okay, yeah, I got. I had other things to do. Um, trying to think through. Yeah, this is good. Okay, so that'll do for now. Um, I'll come back later and do the S3 push. I'm going to look around because the other one that I want to do is have uh, uh, a copy into Redshift. So one of the things we're trying to do um, is push to at, push a CSV file to S3 and then run a copy command on a Redshift um, database to ingest that um, CSV file into uh, into the database, into a table. Um, and so that's there's a copy command that does that. And so I, I think, and so I gotta figure out, we'll have to figure out how to pass the tokens to make that happen. Um, this will be a little bit, that'll be a, a bit of an experiment too because I've uh, not really done that much stuff with Redshift. And actually I'm gonna go through the process of uh, creating a Redshift database, getting the user set up, getting a table set up, 
I'm just going to do all that. I've, I've never done that before. Um, so again, like all this, like most of this stuff right now is just, is me learning. Um, and then digging through particular, partic partic particular, potential, I don't know, parts, something, particulates, uh, just digging through parts and figuring out. So, um, hope you all are enjoying it. Uh, we'll see you, uh, on YouTube or wherever. Uh, y'all take it easy. We'll do this again. Uh, take care and be kind.